Well, g'day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So, to fore jaw or to soft jaw? That is the question. So, we had a, a really great response overnight from um, viewers. That's you lot out there. Uh, on the question that I asked, would you prefer me to do this the other half of the hub by fore jaw or would you like to see soft jaws? So, there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of hobbyists that have never really seen soft jaws used before. So, we may go that way as it's, it's looking like there's more people wanting soft jaws. Or should I go both ways? We might go both ways because there was a lot of people wanting to see this thing set up in a fore jaw to a level of accuracy that I can do this other bore concentric with the front wall. And there was also a number of people that suggested different ways. Well, this is the way we're doing it, but for those people that suggested different ways, I'll show you why I drew the plans up this way and not the way they were suggesting. Now, the way they were suggesting was standardly widely used methods of doing back-to-back -back bearings on a shaft and I've come across a great deal of methods of back-to-back -back bearings um, throughout my working experience and the ideas that they come up with were valid ideas that are genuinely used. So, but I'll swing it out and I'll show you why I'm not going that way. So I'll just quickly mention the other methods that were suggested um, I already had my plans in place anyway how we were going to proceed with this but the other methods were yeah, common common methods one way was to put a circle up in the middle so your bearings go back to back up against a circle um, then you can machine the face and the bore everything's easy concentric but then you still have to go and get a circle I suppose well you'd pick one up at a bearing place but the chances are you'd only pick up a standard circlet, which is a pressed out thing, instead of a circlet which is ground on both sides, which is what is commonly used um, when it's done that way. But it will still work with a standard circlet, you could do it that way. The other method was to bore it up to a shoulder and machine up a spacer that sat in between the two bearings. You could do it that way, it will work fine, it just means you've got to machine up a spacer which creates more work to the job. So the simplest, I went with the simplest way. Oh, there is another way that was mentioned, which is a, it's a, it's a car wheel bearing assembly, which is like, it's, it's like a double cup, and then your cones sit in from either end. You could, the problem with that method is, unless you're familiar with car wheel bearing sizes, I mean, as far as I know, they're sold by model of a car and part number. So you don't really know what size bearing you're going to get and uh, until you open the box up. So um, that was never going to happen with this one. It's just for me it's easy to just go and down the bearing store, $47, I've got two cups, two cones, two oil seals. Um, the other method too was to um, back bore. Um, so you come and with your boring bar from the other side and bore the last half. That's if you do it the way that I've done my one with the uh, ridge in the middle. But, um, that, that comes with its own set of um, issues, back boring, especially when you're trying to take your, your, your last final cut and you can't quite see when your tool's touching off and there's a lot of a lot of things can go pear shaped there, so that's not a method I would even entertain the thought of, unless it was something I really had to do. It was the only way to do a job. That was, would be the only only time I would back bore something. So, yeah, there's um, hopefully that briefly explains the other methods. But to me, the simplest way was just bore from both sides. No extra parts involved, and job's right. So, anyway, let's move on. <coughs> okay, four jaw method first. Uh, 
and I am using copper strips underneath. Okay, let's throw an indicator on that. So that's within 0.01 millimeters there. It's actually just less than 0.01 millimeters. That's three tenths of a thou. So I'll swing you around. And the light will probably blow it out. Shift the light. So what we'll do now is we'll set up an indicator on this back face and we'll clock this back face and then we'll return to this indicator. So that back face is running three thousandths of an inch out. So give that a bit of a tap. I'm just taking the stylus, the weight of the stylus with the ruler so I'm not hitting against the indicator. That's within a thou there now. And that's well within half a thou there. So we go back to our other indicator here. adjustment here.
Okay, that's spot on there within four points. Go out the other way. There were a thou. Just shy of a thou this way. We'll just give this another tap. So we've got to move half a thou. Quarter of that to go. So that's close enough for where we need to be for this job here. So I'll swing you around, we'll show you our final result. Move this light out of the way. So across four points of the chuck. Let's get you on a zero. There's some zero fanatics out there. Sorry I can't get this focused any better. Now I've just adjusted this light a bit better so you guys can see what's going on with this indicator. So you can see now it's on zero. You'll see what happens with these Michitoyo indicators. So I lift the plunger. They do have a rip there. That's nearly 0.1 out. 0.1. Oh, that back on zero. So we'll call this jaw number one. We'll go opposite. We'll make this jaw number two. You can see we're right on zero. Probably a couple of microns above. We'll do the same thing. Bang on zero there. Absolutely spot on. We'll come around to jaw number three. Spot on zero there, hundredth of a millimetre up there. Below there. Okay, spot on zero there. Okay, jaw number four. Spot on zero there. So that waviness there, it's just this, the end of the stylus on the indicator on the um, machining marks that it's running on. So we cannot get that any closer than that. Number one on zero, number four on zero, number three, uh, number two on zero, Number three on zero. I actually thought it was a bit further out than that, so that's why I've readjusted the camera so there isn't a shadow forming on the needle of the indicator. So we're a lot closer than what we first thought we were. Now I don't know if I can still get a shot on the other one. Let's have a crack. Okay, that's probably as good as we're going to get. And that's actually not that bad there. There is a slight needle movement. I'd say half a thou. But, um, if I chase that out, then we'll be upsetting the top one. So let's do it, eh?
right this way we'll go opposite next jaw opposite jaw so we're looking at a quarter of a thou I wonder if I can get that out of it. Okay, let's try that. Okay, we're on a jaw there. We'll go its opposite jaw. Next jaw, its opposite jaw. Still a flicker in that needle. Let's see if we can get that needle rock solid. Try that. And rechecking the other way. Just a slight flicker on the needle. But you won't get that out because that's the stylus running across the machining marks. So that's that's about as good as it's gonna get. If that was a ground finish on there, we could probably improve that. But, um, these Michitoyo, this is a new one. Every time you put the stylus down, it lands in a different spot. So that's what you, that's what we're dealing with. So nothing wrong with that. So that's the four jaw method. And if anyone's interested. I've got the indicator on the bore, which is something we haven't checked. But see, this should be pretty good. And there it is there. That needle movement's just picking up the machining marks. Just stop here for a minute. If you go, if you think, okay, we've managed to complete our facing cut. The um, camera or my iPad it was full. I didn't realise it. So what is critical now? 
we have to, this has to be 18 millimeters wide. It doesn't have to be, it's just a nominal dimension I picked. What has to be critical is um, the parallelism between these two faces as this was, the rear edge was, remember, we were indicating off it to true our bore, to get our bore concentric. So we'll get a bit of a, so if you can hear that, I'm using the ratchet, so I'm not fudging this. So that's two hundredths of a millimetre up on 18 millimetres. We'll just go jaw by jaw. Same. 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 So that's a good check that we had our part set up um, nice and true when we flipped it around. So let's get you sitting back on your on the um, tailstock. I think while I've got this set up and running so true, I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, bearing bore next. Um, and we'll leave the registration um, step that we have to do on the outside and the final OD turning on the outside. We'll leave that till we're in the soft jaws because at this level of concentricity that we've got this thing set up at, uh, we're really going to be pushing the boundaries of soft, soft jaws to replicate this and I don't want to have to take the chance of not being able to hold tolerance and soft jaws and have to reset up and fore jaw. So the critical areas will be done and the, um, the recess register for the chuck um, is not as critical. So let's get, I'll um, get this bore done. I'll bring you back when we're on our last cut for the bearing fit. Okay this is our final cut going through now so just put a bit of cutting oil in it just to keep it all happy. Um, this is a 0.1 millimeter cut. Okay, we'll uh, measure that one up. Let's get you back up on the tail stock. So this is make it or break it. So 51.98 Oh we might have another cut That's 51.95 So we're a thou to go Let me just re Measure twice Cut once Yeah, point, point zero 0.03 millimetres to go. I'm actually reluctant to take a cut with that. I'm... Let's take a spring cut, see what it does.
took a little bit out. Hopefully it didn't take <laughs> a little bit too much. We shall see. I'm confident. Okay, 51.98 is our minimum, 52 is our maximum. Fifty one point nine seven five to so five microns under, and I'm I am not going to take a cup of five microns. I'll tell you what I'll do though, I'll break these edges and we'll take five microns with a. We probably won't even worry about it. Let's just break these edges. So I've just broken those edges and the inside edge and I've just cut them with a boring bar as I did with the other side. Just right at the corner, just to make sure that any radius left from the boring tool doesn't interfere with the bearing. And I think I forgot to press record when I did that. So, rule on size. Um, let's do this bloody register while we're here and just be done with it, eh? Because, at the end of the day, we're not going to gain anything by finish either holding off here and putting it in the soft jaws. I might as well do it while I'm set up. We'll put it in the soft jaws still and we'll see how accurate we can get it set up there just to show the process. So, okay, I'll do this register. Bugger it. So, OD finish size is 130 millimetres. So this is 132 millimetres here, so 2 mil to come off the OD. Again, it's just a nominal dimension, it's not a critical dimension. One point four millimeters to go. It's okay, I'll stop that, it looked like a lot then. We're good.
Okay, let's get rid of this mess. And the measure. Hundred and thirty. Now just run a yeah, do on that rear edge, just a bit more of a chamfer on that rear edge. Now, our register, we're going to turn a register in the front of this. It's a little step, 100 millimeters diameter for three millimeters deep. So I'll do a tool swap. Put our CNMG back in, it's more suited to facing. Reset a zero on that compound. So we know that um, we're 130 diameter on the outside. So we come in just shy of um, 15 millimeters. We go 14, give more we'll measure. Just zero our cross slide. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Okay, Vernia.
100.11 mil to go. Okay, that's fine for a register, 100 millimeter. Now, what I want to do is just do a slight undercut in the corner. So we'll change tools again. Give her a bit of angle on the dangle. Now, we're ready to go over to the milling machine and drill the, um, there's some three holes got to be drilled around the outside. Let's do a test fit with our chuck that we're going to mount on this. That's what we want. Very happy with that. Now I've got to get the bastard off. Here we are. Cool. So that's this part done. Um, I suppose the next thing we've got to do now is reset this up in the soft jaws. Oh, and don't forget, bearing it's got to be pressed in, so, now that's stuck. Cool. Now, that's the machining completed on the rear of the hub, as you've seen, by the four-jaw method. Now, the, as far as I could count up, there were 32 people going for the four jaw, 44 people going for the soft jaws. The reason I continued the machining in the four jaw was in case I couldn't duplicate the accuracy that we had this hub set up in the soft jaws. I'm confident we'll go close, but we may only get within half a thou. Uh, also with the soft jaws so we were a bit under we were under half a thou with this so I thought bugger it I'll just rather than <laughs> having to reset it and, and muck around too much and kick myself I didn't finish the machining now I went ahead and done it now so anyway we will devote a full episode to soft jaws as there is uh, a little other job that I will be running through the soft jaws and Going through the setup of the soft jaws and all this will take a full episode. So, and it's my preference to do that at the end of this project because I think I can probably get to the end of this project in one more episode. Is really all we have to do 
is um, press our bearings in, machine up an end cap, and then go through the procedure for setting the preload on the bearings. So I think I'll do it that way. That way it gets this job finished, then we can concentrate on the soft jaws. Should be sweet. <laughs> so anyway, um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, that was, yeah, just a bit of forge jaw work in real time. Uh, it, it, just, as you've seen, to set it up within a thou, it's, it's only a minute, minute and a half, it's nothing. But once you start chasing tenths and microns, that's where your time blows out. It's, um, yeah, you can end up going around in circles if you're not careful. So, anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers, and hopefully see you in the next video. Take care.